This is a topic that a lot of people get very um, hurt over, causes a lot of anxiety, causes a lot of shame, but it's something that we need to talk about because it's a major problem for men and women all around the world and uh, it's more of a problem perhaps in the Western culture uh, because of our liberalism that is ingrained within many of us. But the Greek term from which the word of pornography came from is could be translated as the writing of harlots or prostitutes. And don't think for a moment that you can't fall. Purity isn't a matter of pride, but of prayer and protection. Temptation's desire is to overtake you. You won't have to look hard for temptation. It will find you, it will seek you out, and it will seduce you. If your temptation is common to all of mankind, and every living human being is tempted over something. And this is a major one that many people struggle with, especially men, but it's not limited to that. But you see, God is faithful. He won't abandon you. And he will only permit what you are able to bear, but you have choices to make as well. He does make a way of escape, but we have to make a choice to take that way of escape or not. And God will help you bear the trials and, and temptations. Places of temptation should be avoided if you really want to mean business with God. For example, if you have a problem with alcohol, stay away from places that sell it or serve it. It's, it's really simple because then the temptation is not so obvious in your face. So there are keys to victory over pornography. The first one is simply flee away from it. If you have a problem with pornography, stay away from the places where it's available. The internet is probably the biggest one. Somebody tells me the internet, um, the biggest single product sold on the internet is pornography. So it's huge. But we need to pursue righteousness and faith and love and peace with those who are called on the Lord out of a pure heart. Secondly, we need fellowship. We need to be with other people because they help us to stay away from these issues. Thirdly, we need to follow. We need to follow Jesus. He wasn't tempted by this. It's, it's much more recent as a cultural issue uh, than in those days. We need to feed our spirits. We need to read scripture. We need to be able to feed our spirit with stuff that will replace that which has been a temptation. We need to faithfully pray. When uh, Jesus spoke a parable, scripture says that man ought to pray and not lose heart. Now, if you fall in this, you can get up again and turn your back on it and turn your face towards Jesus and pray. You can fall in love, firstly with your wife and of course with Jesus. Too many wives have been hurt by this. It is not a victimless crime. And we need to get ourselves in, in order. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, not just our family and our workmates, uh, but we need to put aside the things that would be a temptation to us. We need to foresee the places where this is a temptation in order that we can stay away from this. We need to fortify ourselves and be surrounded by people who build us up as well. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there's any virtue and anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Fill our minds with positive and good stuff, not, not someone who's busy trying to sell their soul by selling their body. You see, God made a woman to be a helpmeet to a man. And I'm not going to get into the whole area of uh, who's more important because God made them male and female for his purpose so that they could reproduce amongst other things. We need to be aware that the financial cost of pornography is huge because the people who sell it are making megabucks. 
Christian stewardship says we shouldn't be spending our money on things that don't edify us and provide for our needs, not our greeds. So when people come for ministry for this, as they have, I ask two questions. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get healed, delivered and transformed? And what exactly would you like God to do for you right now? And the, the burden, the conviction of sin that a lot of these, particularly men who come to me for this, is huge. The shame. Maybe they've been caught out with it and they're embarrassed by it. Well, that's the downside, one of the downsides. So when people are needing ministry, what are the real requirements? Well, God requires repentance. That's to say, I'm sorry. One of the things I noticed with um, uh, court cases and the, the uh, defending lawyer often says after the case and sometimes even to the judge, uh, my client is remorseful. Remorse is I'm sorry I got caught. Repentance is I'm sorry I did it. That's the difference. We need forgiveness. Now God will forgive you if you repent, if you say I'm sorry. But sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. Sometimes our spouse or our family members need to forgive us too, especially if they know about these things. We need a humble spirit, a spirit that's not arrogant, a spirit that says, look, I struggle. Maybe there's a historic or family uh, reason for this, a generational iniquity issue that needs to be dealt with. And we will cover that teaching elsewhere. And we need to be resolute. We need to be determined I'm going to be free of this because it's a bondage in my life. So here are some guidelines for ministry if you're needing help with this. We need to renounce lust, especially lust of the eyes. Men are turned on more by what they see than anything else. Secondly, we need to renounce the pleasures of pornography. They're very short term and you always want more later the next time around. And so we need to renounce it and say, I don't want it anymore. We need to renounce any cheating, either in our mind or elsewhere, of our spouse, of our husband or wife, and of our family. We need to renounce the participation in the demeaning, devaluing, or humiliation of those on the photos, on the videos, or whatever they are. You see, they are God's children made in the image and for whom Christ died. And Jesus came that they too might have abundant life. And pornography is not an abundant life. We need to renounce our failure in financial stewardship. Could have been better spent on the family, on the needs of the kingdom of God. We need to rebuke and to bind and expel any and all evil spirits that cause the lust, the adultery, the fornication, and including any spirits which came through the family bloodline because of previous generational iniquity. And lastly, when people come for ministry of any kind, but particularly this one, there are six things we go through. Firstly, check that they're born again, that they're saved. You can't actually do effective ministry too much with someone who's not. Secondly, check that they're baptized in water with repentance, which means they need to be old enough when they were baptized to repent. An infant doesn't know it's done anything except fill its nappies or its diapers. If you, do they have the habit of daily prayer and Bible reading? Do they feed their spirit? Because that's essential. Do they attend a Bible-believing church, whether it's in someone's home or in a big religious building? Doesn't matter, but it's where mature disciples of Jesus can minister safely with one another. Do they have an attitude of gratitude to God and an attitude of forgiveness towards others and even sometimes to themselves. When those six things are done, when they are in place, ministry is really easy. I give you this comfort from 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Now we've put this as part of the teaching on how to minister to change lives and communities and it's in there so that you can get help from this. 